Hey y'all, today let's build some breakout images in Squarespace 7.1. They don't have this ability yet in 7.1. Uh, they do in 7.0, at least I know in the Brian template. Um, but I want to add this to a couple of my blogs and so I'm gonna show you how I did this. So let's jump over here. I have a totally new website. I have my, this is my blog banner image plugin if you care to know. I have that set up, so this is my blog here, but you can see these images are constrained within the width of our blog. I don't like my text being, I could change all of this. Uh, let's go into edit mode. I could change all of this right here to editing my blog right here. We can go content width wide and you know that would pull our images out a bit wider. But I don't really like that because this text it just becomes really hard to read if you're just looking across the entire screen like that. So I like to keep my text narrow. Uh, so that's where we're going to start here, and it looks like it's being a little jumpy for me, so I'll just hit save. So the first thing we want to do is the, the way that it's sort of a little bit of a hack. We're going to, through CSS, we're going to pull this wide, 100% wide, so the width of this. So I'm just going to, I have this blog page opened up in an incognito window over here. So I'm going to right click, hit inspect right here so we can look at the page source. I'm going to grab my selector up here and then hover over one of these elements. Um, I know this is being pulled in. The width is being constrained by the margin and the margin is denoted by this orange color. So I'm just going to scroll up, hover up until I see the margins on either side. So there we go. And you can see the class on this is blog-item dash inner dash wrapper and you I, I know that this is the right one because if I click on it you'll see this width right here and if I can change this width to say you know 100% there you go so you can see this is what we're wanting to change so I want this to be 100% and so I'm gonna create my back in my my editor over here I'm gonna create my own selectors over here so I know that this is this blog item inner wrapper, uh, it's right here. There's no ID selector there. And if I put an ID, that's gonna override the style that I have here. And so that's what I'm gonna look for, an ID and one of the parent elements. Uh, and the one I'm looking for on blog posts is this, this ID equals sections. So since we're doing an ID, do a hashtag sections, and then I'm gonna do my, what was the one we just, it was a blog item in a wrapper. So I'm gonna copy that, do a dot, cause it's a class and blog item in a wrapper and do my opening, closing, curly brackets, width 50, uh, it is 50%, so width 100%. So there we go. So now I know I'm changing the right thing. Now what I wanna do is make my text, these text blocks, 50% back to where we were. But there's a lot of different blocks in there that we can change and I don't know if I wanna do this for every single one. So I'm just going to select every single block that we have and constrain it back to 50%. And then we'll create some exceptions to that rule. So you can see Squarespace does this thing. Every time you add a block, you see it has this class SQS Squarespace block right there. So I can grab that selector. So I'm gonna do because I want to do it within this blog item in a wrapper. So I'm going to copy that. So all of these SQS dash block uh, and we're going to open and closing and we're going to do back to width 50%, right? And now it's on the left. And so let's do margin, margin uh, zero auto. And that's going to center us up right there. So now we're back to exactly where we were, but we can use the not pseudo class to create exceptions to this. So this is saying every single element that has a square, uh, Squarespace block class, which is any element that you drop into Squarespace. You can see if I hover over our image right here, you'll see a Squarespace block, and then it has a Squarespace block image class. And let's see, I got a video down here, hover over this, click on that, you see Squarespace block, it has that, and then Squarespace block video. So all of these have this Squarespace block class. So let's create an exception. I'm gonna do colon not, and this is our pseudo selector. So this is right now, it's just saying not everything. Um, or I guess we just have a syntax error there. Um, I'm gonna do not SQS, and I'm, this is gonna be our, I'm gonna grab our image block right here. So our SQS dash block dash 
image because that's going to be unique to all the images, any image block we drop in Squarespace. SQS block dash image. Oop, didn't spell that right. And there we go. So that popped out. Great. That's exactly what we're looking to do. And I also want to do it probably with video blocks, right? So I'm going to just, and notice there's no space here. This space means this, this is the parent element of everything after it. And this space here means these two are the parent elements of everything after it. No space between SQS block and this pseudo class. No space means it's all within the same element. So you see this SQS dash block, that is within the same element right here, this div, as my SQS dash block dash image. And so that's why there's no space between those selectors. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. Also, another exception we wanna make is SQS block dash video, and that's gonna pop that one out. Um, so this actually is looking pretty good, but let's save. There's a problem sometimes, and that would be, what if I wanted to add uh, maybe a text block between these two? So you can see I'm going to put in some text here. You see it's it has this padding in here because it's doing some weird exception that that, 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 that this, this text block within this row is still having the constrained width of the 50% between these two, and I don't really want that, so I need to create another exception here. So I'm going to copy everything we have here and I'm going to add this. Uh, if you look at anything, let's just save this actually. Let's delete this, save, and then refresh our page right here. See what happens. So this is looking good, but we still have this ugly stuff right here. So whenever you add any elements next to each other, Squarespace creates a row. So if I hover up, you see this, this, these columns. These are our three columns within our row right here. And this is sibling to our other blocks right there. So this, this row, anything that's within a row, I want to create an exception for that as well. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to copy our selectors right here. Do, do, do. Um, and we're also going to do... Uh, what is the other one? I want to do this row, but I, I can't just do a row. I'll, I'll show you. I'll do SQS dash row. Uh, maybe I can just do a row, right? Um, and so that that didn't work there. So we want SQS dash row. Why isn't this working? Oh, because we want our blocks within it, right? SQS dash block. So any block that is within a row, but that doesn't look great. And there's a lot of other weird stuff going on. Let's see why that is happening. SQS row, SQS block. Oh, we want these to be 100%, of course. Anything within there, we want to be 100%. But that's not getting it for us either. SQS block. Oh, maybe we just need to import in this because it's probably got some other things happening. So this is this is what the, exactly. So this is where we're at. So this whole page is also within a row, and so I'm saying anything within our blog item inner wrapper that's a block that's within a row that's a block within a row there change but you see if I scroll up everything on this page right here is within a row itself so I need to add this other class right here snag this guy Squarespace uses a lot of columns and rows so we'll throw him in there and scroll down and that is looking a little bit better but we have this this isn't doing what we want because we don't we haven't defined the the border box of it, border box, uh, or no, the box sizing, box sizing, which is border box, and there we go. So that's what we're looking to do, and we can get rid of that margin because that's not really necessary there. So there we go. That's exactly what we want it to be. Everything within a row is going to break out. Our videos are going to break out. Our images are going to break out. And then on mobile, it looks terrible. So we need to fix that. And we can fix that easily by just wrapping all of this in a media query. Media query. So if the 
we want all of these all of these CSS rules we want them to apply only if the minimum width of the screen is larger than 799 pixels so if the if the screen is larger then mobile, then apply these styles. If it's not, then just ignore these styles. So if I break this back out, you'll see it works. So boom, there we go. I hope this tutorial helps. I talked a lot about a bunch of random stuff, but I hope you found some good nuggets in it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and take it easy. Have a good evening or day, wherever you are.